Hello, my name is Christina Brown and I'm the instructor for CS164. Um, I am going to be talking to you about the content for week 12, which is file input and output. And I think that you're going to really like this section because it's going to give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of being able to use different types of input and being able to output in different ways as well. So I'm just going to jump right in here and we're going to start by talking about the file class in Java. Um, and before I get started with that, just know that as I move through these slides, I may be referring to input and output as IO. Um, that's a commonly used term um, in Java for input and output and also just in programming too. So, um, so I may be using that throughout the lecture series. Um, so let's talk about the file class um, in Java. Um, the file class in Java it represents files as objects. Okay, we talked about object-oriented programming already, so this should look a little familiar to you. So the file class lives in the Java.io package, so you do need to import Java.io whenever you use the file class similarly to um, importing java.util whenever you use the scanner class. Um, so when you create a file object, that's going to allow you to get information about file, uh, a file from your computer. One thing that I do want to note is this last bullet point. Um, when you create a file object, it does not create a new file on your disk. We're going to be talking about that output piece later on in the lecture series, but just know that this file object does not create a new file on your disk. So let's jump into this little snippet of code at the bottom of the slide here. And without going into too much detail here, um, just looking at it, we're, um, it's pretty obvious from um, our object-oriented programming um, section over the last couple of weeks that we're creating a new file object and we're calling it f and then we're creating some kind of this this conditional that's going to check for a couple of things um, in association with that file um, and then we're going to do something if that conditional is um, is met so um, this is the perfect segue into this next slide because we're going to talk about the methods in the file class and some of these methods probably look familiar because we just looked at them on the previous slide. Um, so we can actually check to see if the file can be read using the can read method. Um, we can delete the file from the disk using the delete method. Um, we can check to see if the file exists and this is going to be an important piece or um, when we start talking about exception handling. We can also get the name, the length, and we can change the name of a file using all using the file class. And I wanna encourage you to go and look at the javadoc um, file class and just get a little bit more information. Obviously, this is a, a broad overview of the file class, so there's a lot more information at the javadoc on um, file class, but these are some commonly used methods that you might um, be able to use. Um, so the scanner class, so I'm just going to back up a little bit here and talk about the scanner class because this is something that's very familiar. Um, the scanner class reads input and processes strings and numbers from the user. This is something that we've been doing all semester um, and we've probably told you that this is a tool that you can use to um, create to get input from the user and be able to manipulate that input and use it for whatever output you're you're doing or whatever calculation you're doing. Um, but now that we've learned object-oriented programming, we can see that um, the scanner, this is a scanner class, and we can create a scanner object from the scanner class. Um, and by using this um, system.in in the parameter of our scanner object, we are telling Java that we're getting our input from the keyboard. So because scanner can also, scanner can get input from the keyboard, but it can also get input from a file. So it can read a file as well. And I don't want to jump to this quite yet, but let's go back to 
um, this other slide and look at some of the common methods that we've used with Scanner. Um, so after we create that scanner object, we can use those, access those methods where we can read a line, read a string, read an integer, and even and read a double. And again, we've used these all semester, and so now we're starting to dig in and understand exactly what they are. And we can use them in different ways now too. So now we're going to read a file um, by passing a file object as a parameter when we construct that scanner. So a couple of examples here. The first one is in pseudocode. So we're not actually naming the scanner and we don't actually have a file name in our file object that we're creating. But if you look in the example, we can see the exact code for how to create a scanner object using a file. And so this is where we actually input the file name in quotations because, and here's something that a lot of my students um, struggle with too, is that that string name, the, the name of the file is a string, so it needs to be in quotations, okay? Um, and so we're actually creating an object, a file object without a name in this first example. If you look at the bottom example, we can actually create a file object with a name and it's called file, lowercase f. Um, and then you can put that file object name into the scanner object um, as a parameter, okay? And it'll read that file, okay? So that concludes our first video in week 12, the lecture series. We still have a little ways to go. This isn't quite as long as the object-oriented programming section, um, but it's equally important. So I'll look forward to seeing you on the next lecture.